Hi everybody, welcome to another Painting by Numbers with Rom. Today we're going to be painting some figures from Conan, but it's going to be one particular figure out of the troops there. Um, there's a, a guy that is completely all buffed out. The reason we're going to do him is I want to show you how to do skin and how we're going to take it to a certain level, okay, uh, today and really show you how a wash works, how it, you can manipulate a model to go from just kind of there to there, just like that. Now, after the wash would dry, there's another level to it. It's lightening up the model. We're not going to cover that in today's video. We're going to save that for another time and some more of these models that we do. But today, our main focus is putting on a layer and showing how the wash brings out so much detail. And how you can really, 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 by just doing this simple, basic layer, then wash, boom, get them to the table. Some of you who are beginners just want to just get these things painted and to the table because they're better than just being gray. And that's what we're looking to do and teach you today. This is for beginners. You guys that are experts, this isn't something that, that you're really going to be too thrilled with watching. This is just a simple, basic, getting people to pick up a brush and paint their models. You have all these beautiful games, why not paint them and make them beautiful for everybody that you play with. Very simple, and I'm going to walk you right through it, and I hope you enjoy what I have for you today. So, without further ado, why don't we get right to the table and get going, huh? Conan, let's take a look. All right, so here we have, as you can see, these Conan figures. And there's about 12 of these guys that come in the box. So you, I know some of you are probably looking. And as you can see, I primed them white. Now, why did I prime them white? Well, it was the only primer I had. But in a way, this is good because we're putting straight flesh on here. And you're going to see right here, that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm not worried about anything I get or where the the flesh goes I want to cover the entire body I want to make sure I get every recess I want to get that coat of Kessel of flesh that's what I'm using here you can use any flesh tone it's not going to matter but I'm just getting it on there making sure I got a good coverage of it getting on his face on his hair I'm not worried about that because I'm working my way out I'm taking the biggest the co the color that is going to take up the most area and I'm just freely putting it on there and getting a result right away you can see how it's going on nice and you know I'm getting some on his on, on his uh, skirt there or, or whatever cover up he has I'm getting it on the bone on the on the on his axe it doesn't matter because I have to paint over all that and since it's a lighter color it's easier to put a, a lighter color down and then go over and uh, another color now if this was primed black you probably would have to do two co coats of this okay because the flesh just wouldn't go on right you would be able to see the black underneath so for this it just turned out that I, I primed correctly what I needed to do and as you can see right there you know we got that all over there yeah it's all over some areas that his necklace and his hair and stuff like that but we're not worried about that we're more worried about the big area being covered now we're going to be have to be careful or else we're going to have to go back and forth back and forth these next steps is where we really have to be careful here and as you can see that dried very very nicely um, yeah I covered some of those areas but that doesn't matter because we're going to go over it but we're going to paint uh, some of these areas um, with a dry bark and you're going to see where this is all going to work out perfectly here uh, the dry bark is going to go over the uh, uh, area there and the ushabi bone we're going to be using for uh, the necklace and the skulls and the skulls on his midriff there now the first thing that we want to use is a tuscador fur I like that because it offsets the brown a little bit so let's just show you where we're going to put that. We're going to put that on the front of his coverall. Um, and we're not going to worry. This is another one. We're not too worried where it goes. We don't want to get a lot of it on the flesh. We really just want to work this in 
on this area and if, if you look right here and, and what I'm doing right here I'm just painting nice and easy taking my time there's a skull there I'm not worried about getting that on there I'm just concerned about watching the flesh there and taking my time I have the right size brush now these are just Hobby Lobby brushes okay very simple and I skipped ahead a little bit as you can see I'm just taking my time working from the inside working out to that line and if you get a little honest like it doesn't matter you just take a little flesh and and and, and paint it afterwards but once we get him completely done you look where you made some mistakes then you pull out the color and then you fix the ones that you need to fix it's okay to make mistakes it happens to us all but you can see here I decided to use this and it, it, it's a nice dark color and it'll dry very nicely and as you can see I painted over the skull but that's okay because we're going to paint over that and we're not too worried about that and even that fur thing that he has on the back which protects his back end I guess I don't know maybe it's fur armor who knows but uh, we're not worried about getting the the Tuscan fur on that and you can see we're just being very concise and now we're gonna take um, our dry uh, our, our dried bark and you can see here I'm trying to be as careful as I can but I'm not too worried about it there's a reason for that I, I'm just getting close enough I'm taking my time good strokes but I'm watching that flesh especially towards his back there I want to make sure that I get that in there correctly and I don't have to do a lot of touch-ups and that's where the key is here now the other thing here is we're gonna uh, paint the staff of his club uh, or axe or whatever he wants his weapon let's just leave it at that and and you can see I'm just taking my time I'm not worried about getting it on those stone things at all I'm just all I'm worried about is just making sure I have the coverage I'm not touching the flesh so we don't have to touch up a lot of it and you can see here just work in my brush I feel pretty confident with my brush that I can start deeper there are times that you're not going to feel confident start with the highest point and work your way down to the next color just take your time this is where you could take take your time now this guy took me a, a whole I think about 20 minutes to do it took I, I think it took me longer to film it and explain things than it did to actually uh, paint it I, I'd say about 20 25 minutes tops okay so with a group of them it goes very very easy because you're going in a line you want to take one color and paint each one this one I'm just painting this guy because I want to show you guys then I'll go wipe out the rest now as you can see I'm just making sure I got good coverage on everything you want to make sure you don't see any white and, and we're looking pretty good there not too bad not too shabby it doesn't look like much that's the whole thing you got to believe that it's not going to look too uh, too much until you get to the end result we're going to take dawn stone which is a dark gray and that's where we're going to put the stone on the edge of those uh that axe there because i don't think they're metal they certainly wouldn't have anything metal back then well it is the age of conan but these guys look pretty primitive and and the way that thing looked, I'm just going to go with the whole thing that they tied a couple stones to a stick. And that works for me pretty good. So I like the way that kind of works out. So now, as you can see, I'm just touching everything up, making sure everything is as perfect as can be. There we go. Now you see how I'm just taking that brush and I'm, I, I keep turning the model. Always turn the model so you get a good view of everything that you're doing. If you just stay one way and then flip them over, but turn your model different ways and constantly look where you're painting so you make sure that you get every single area so you don't have to repaint. And that's the whole point, not having to redo your work. And that's the, probably one of the most important things is if you can get one good solid coat on. Now, th these are just layer coats. So this is just the first layer. And that's why they uh, some, sometimes you'll see it says layer paint. See, like right there, your shabby bone, layer paint. That is a layer. That is the bottom layer. So all those skulls that we missed and painted over and, and, and messed up, now we're going to bring those out. He's got a bone in his hair. 
and you can see I painted his hair uh, the dry brown because I think it's going to work with the wash that I'm going to do. So we're going to go over and we're going to bring that skull out because he has a skull right, well, right there. <laughs> and just nice and easy with that brush. We got a smaller brush so we can take our time. We're in no rush. We want to make sure that we do the job that we're trying to do. And you can see right here that we are just getting that in there exactly where we want to. And now I'm do he's holding a group of skulls there. So we want to make sure we get those. Now watch what I do with the model, how I'm turning the model. And I'm looking and I'm looking and I stop and I look. I'll get a little more paint, but I'll turn that model and I'll look and I'll make sure that I'm getting everything. Right now I'm being lazy and taking my time getting the paint. There we go. Now you see, there we go. We're going to turn to the back side and we're going to make sure, and I'm looking at every angle I possibly can. I've got my nice little headset on. Make sure you, you can see the model perfectly. Remember, using a magnifying glass helps a lot. Anything that's bigger, it looks small. It looks like it's huge when you're painting it. So you have a magnifying glass and something's looking like this. It makes it real easy to go over and paint over. The bigger you make it, the illusion in your mind that it's it's smaller. Now, as you can see, we got all the bone. We did the bone in his hair, and we're feeling pretty good about that right now. And uh, matter of fact, I think we're headed right to do the bone in his hair. But we want to be very, very careful with that. See how I'm turning it, and I'm just hitting the high point and working my way down. I always start at the top, work my way down, especially with something in his hair. I'm looking, making sure that I make good clean strokes look at that just nice and easy it's almost like I'm not even touching the model to start with I just kinda move my hand so I know the stroke that I wanna use I wanna make sure that when I hit the model I'm not shaky or anything like that and I have a good feel for it 99% well not 90 but about 70% of painting is it's not so much skill it's feel it's having a feel for it learning it now he has a couple skulls on the back there that we're gonna do um, he has two bones that are crossed like this and if you guys have this Conan uh, game you'll see that there's a bunch of these guys in here and this is a very quick efficient way to paint these guys this will build some confidence and we're gonna we're gonna do some more of these guys in the Conan set so you guys can feel very confident you would use the same technique to paint Conan and some of the other guys that are just very heavy skin the only thing you would separate uh, you know um, add in there is the sword which we know is lead belcher because we learned from our last episode about how to use lead belcher. Now his necklace here, see how I'm very lightly, I'm using the edge of the brush so I can just get that necklace around his neck. I'm not worried, even worried about touching his chest because I know what that wash is going to do. And as you can see we're taking a, a good look at this and as we go further in the weeks, we'll, we'll have better camera angles, better lighting, and all that other stuff so you guys could really, really see things. But take a look at this model. You could put that on the table right now and be happy with it just the way it is. Okay? That's, very, that's a very playable in, uh, miniature right there. But why not take it a little bit farther? We could take it a little farther. And I want to show you the difference. And remember here at the 1149 mark, of, of, of the painting part of this I don't know how long the intro is but if, if you just count down and you come to this part and then you skip ahead towards the end you're gonna see the difference and how much that wash is gonna make now all this is all the layer just a base layer and like I said you could play with that miniature just the way it is but we're gonna take a Reichland flesh shade okay and this is where the work really comes in this is where we're really going to bring out this miniature. And look, I just put it on there. But here's where the real work is. Okay? And you got to make sure the, the, the one thing is that that layer is dry. Okay? That's very important. Is moving this wash around. You guys, when you put this on here, you're going to discover all the detail of this model. And how detailed this model really is. By taking this, this wash and working it in. And as you work your brush and move it around, you're going to see where the recesses are. 
because you're going to move that that wash around as you can see right here what I'm doing right here I'm taking and I'm, I'm adding and I'm making sure I got all the recesses covered when I when I do his leg I look to see the the detail in his calf and his foot and his, in between his toes his hands in between his fingers his chest his pectorals all that stuff his abs you know every model has a, you know an a pack for some reason and I'm just moving it around and I, I want to make sure that in the face structure I get it and as I'm moving that around I'm putting it all over the entire model look how it does on the skull on on his clothing okay his hair the bone for the necklace and the bones that he's carrying it brings it all out and look at his skin look at how his skin is look how now all of a sudden he has detail and symmetry and all those wonderful things look at that look how good that looks compare that to what we had originally but you're gonna see where maybe there's some spots missing where you can move that you don't want it to be a big puddle in the middle because then it's not gonna look right you want to be able to move it around and get it in the recesses really well and look how that skin is look at the definition on his back okay and it was such a simple process now this is playable okay there's another level to this but we're going to talk that about that in the future videos but look look how detailed he is look how perfect and 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 you could see the how ripped he is and everything because it creates shadows that's what it does it creates shadows and i'm showing you here how it creates those shadows perfectly exactly where we want so here's the a comparison to what we started with okay when we just put the flesh on and here's where we are now if that dries that's perfectly playable and everybody go oh god you painted these wow these are fantastic and all it took was a simple wash I hope you guys enjoyed this I hope this helps you that's what these are for I hope you enjoy this and I hope you'll follow us each and every week as we keep on doing this till next time I'm Rob Orr we'll see you soon